China is preparing for war, while Xi Jinping tells troops to fall in line. And Taiwan and the U.S. should be prepared. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Chinese leader Xi Jinping is telling the People's Liberation Army to prepare for war. Last week, Xi Jinping visited the PLA Marine Base in Guangdong Province, and he told the troops to devote their minds and energy to preparing for war, to maintain a state of high alert, and to remain absolutely loyal, absolutely pure, and absolutely reliable. To be fair, Xi Jinping often tells the PLA to prepare for war, like back in May this year and in January 2019, and in October 2018, and in August 2017. You get the picture. And it makes sense. Xi Jinping spent a lot of time and effort reorganizing the PLA and purging all his enemies there. He didn't do all that so the PLA could be unprepared to go to war. So Xi Jinping just telling soldiers to be prepared for war isn't necessarily very alarming by itself. But there are also other reasons that people are getting worried about a possible PLA attack. The same day as Xi's speech, in the nearby city of Shenzhen, officials ordered all residents to prepare emergency supplies in 72 categories, such as enough food and water for 72 hours and a fire blanket. In fact, China's emergency management ministry and several municipal governments like Beijing and Tianjin issued similar orders last month. So is China gearing up for war? And if so, against whom? The most obvious target is Taiwan. The Chinese Communist Party has been threatening military action against Taiwan this entire year. From flying warplanes over Taiwan airspace to releasing video of China's military launching a simulated invasion of Taiwan. In its annual work report this year, the Chinese government removed the word peaceful from long-standing references to reunification with Taiwan. Now, if you've watched or listened to the interview we did with Taiwan expert Ian Easton on the China Unscripted podcast, you'll remember that because of weather constraints, there are really only two times a year China could launch an invasion across the Taiwan Strait, in the spring and in the early fall. Both those windows have passed this year, so we're not going to get a Chinese invasion of Taiwan on our 2020 disaster bingo. Darn. The next window for invasion is in March 2021. Does Xi Jinping's military rhetoric and the emergency rationing mean the PLA will invade next March? Not necessarily. According to Taiwan's defense ministry, China's military still apparently lacks the landing craft and logistical support needed to carry out a full-scale sea and air invasion. And as much as the Chinese Communist Party wants to conquer Taiwan, losing a fight would be devastating to the image of the party within China and around the world. More likely, this is an attempt by the party to demoralize Taiwan into thinking a war would be so costly and so bloody it might as well just surrender now. Well, I doubt Taiwan will surrender. But there's another target audience for Xi's speech. The United States. And I'll tell you why after this short break. Welcome back. Chinese leader Xi Jinping is trying to convince the United States that it would be too much hassle to defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion. Xi Jinping has also been making speeches recently about the war to resist U.S. aggression and aid Korea. You probably know it as the Korean War. It's the only time that U.S. and Chinese forces have actually fought with troops on the ground. And the fact that Xi is suddenly bringing this up isn't just because of the Korean boy band BTS. This year is the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. And Xi Jinping and the other members of the Politburo Standing Committee recently visited a military museum where Xi talked about the war. He said, The victory in the war to resist U.S. aggression and aid Korea was a victory of justice, a victory of peace, and a victory of the people. Xi called it a historic decision and an effort to safeguard peace and resist aggression. 
Yes, after communist North Korea invaded the South and the UN, backed mostly by US troops, stepped in, Chinese forces had to resist American aggression against the North Korean heroes. Now, that isn't exactly a new way for China to frame the Korean War. So why is Xi Jinping bringing it up now, seven decades later? It's a not very subtle metaphor. See, today, China is also resisting aggression from the US, which is trying to interfere in internal Chinese affairs, aka Taiwan. So the message to the US is clear. We've fought you before, we'll fight you again, and it won't be pretty. So don't back Taiwan. Also, don't read up on your Korean War history, because then you'd learn how U.S. involvement actually succeeded in saving South Korea from invasion by communist forces. Anyway, China has been threatening retaliation over U.S. weapon deals with Taiwan. And Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian recently told Washington to cut all U.S.-Taiwan military ties. But there was another message hidden in Xi's recent speech to the PLA, one that I bet he was hoping the rest of the world wouldn't pick up on. Did you catch it? Here it is again. He told the troops to devote their minds and energy to preparing for war, to maintain a state of high alert, and to remain absolutely loyal, absolutely pure, and absolutely reliable. Sure, Xi Jinping wants you to focus on the readiness and willingness of the PLA to fight a war, so maybe you think twice about whether it's even worth fighting China. But he doesn't want you to think too much about the part where he says the military needs to remain absolutely loyal, pure, and reliable. Like I said earlier, Xi Jinping spent years purging the PLA. High-ranking generals have been jailed for life, and many have been suicided, as they say. That is not good for morale. So it's possible Xi Jinping doesn't quite feel as in control of the military as he'd like. But you know what would boost morale? Another purge! And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Arnold Keane says, If the economy in China continues to go south, don't be surprised that the CCP decides they need to start a war with Taiwan to distract the people from their problems. It seems to work most of the time. The fact that they may be starting a war with four or five other nations is probably the only thing currently stopping them. But the saying, desperate times lead to desperate measures, is still meaningful today. Arnold, what are you talking about? China's economy is going south? No, China's economy is great. Just ask the media. China's economy is surging. It's the envy of the world, because it's the world's only major growth engine. Which is why U.S. investors are all over China's bond market. Unless, of course, you for some reason question the official numbers coming out of China, which the New York Times and Bloomberg obviously don't, so why should you? But you're absolutely right. The Chinese Communist Party tries its best to distract its citizens from economic woes, usually with things like anti-Japanese sentiment. But the problem with using a war to do that is the party could always lose. Plus, there's the economic cost of war itself and the risk of countries around the world finally wising up to the party. Don't you worry about the Chinese Communist Party. There's a reason why it spends more on internal security forces than on its military. Because if people inside China get a little too rowdy over economic woes, why send the tanks all the way over to Taiwan? It's much easier to just use them to crush your own people. Thanks for your comment, Arnold. And if you'd like to have me respond to your question or comment on the show for hundreds of thousands of people to hear, join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army and support us in the battle against the Chinese Communist Party. You can join for as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. You'll get some other cool perks as well. Head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.